So, in the first class of high resolution electron microscopy, I have discussed to you the basic fundamentals of high resolution electron microscopy, and we are going to continue from the class which where we ended in the last class. So, as I say, so uh, shown you that the contrast transfer function, uh, which is known as the transfer function in a high resolution electron microscope, is basically a very complex function, and it can be written like the one I showed you. Transfer function is equal to two where the first factor is as a function of z is basically the aperture function and this actually is a strong function of the g and psi, psi is basically the angular factor which comes into play. So, from this function we have seen that how the psi actually plays a very important role and finally, we derive the optimum or values of the psi. The one which I can write like this is depends on defocus as well as it depends on the C s or the aberration spherical aberration constant So, therefore, the factors which control the constant transfer function basically are the defocus and the spherical aberration constant of a microscope. Obviously, lambda goes into the picture because lambda is the wavelength of the, the electron beam and g is the spatial frequency which is inverse of lambda and uh, so therefore, the defocus and the spherical aberration constant demarcates the values of psi and psi can be as a function of g as we have discussed here square with little defocus and and the fourth power for the C s. So, we know that for a particular microscope C s is a constant C s values never changes for a particular microscope, but obviously it can vary from microscope to microscope also it can be changed if you change the objective lens of a microscope. So, knowing that C s is fixed by a particular microscope the free parameter parameter which can play the important role is the, the delta f or the defocus and that is where we actually shown you how this can be uh, determine uh, using different values of C s and different values of defocus how this function can change. So, we discuss this factor in detail and find out what is the optimum focus limit for high resolution microscopy. So, this is the slide where I am showing you the actual or ideal transfer function when the microscope lenses are perfect. As you see that the no microscope is a basically a perfect one because there will be lens defects like spherical aberration and other factors astigmatism and as well as this chromatic aberration. So, chromatic aberrations can is very uh, difficult to correct and be because of the aspects that the beams which are falling on the sample may have different energies but astigmatism can be 100 percent corrected. On the other hand the spherical aberration which is a important fact factor going into this equation is very difficult to correct, but off late it has been found that spherical aberration constant can be uh, spherical aberration can be easily corrected in the electron microscope and can be used. So, this is the ideal spherical aberration uh, the transfer function which is shown here. So, obviously in ideal transfer functions the as a function of g the obvious the value of 0 in the transfer function should be as more small number as possible the number of zeros here is this and this is for an ideal microscope which is not possible to achieve at any cost. So, in a real microscope the transfer function so the actual uh, the here I am showing you the ideal transfer function for any transmission electron microscope. 
So, the you can see that the transfer function varies starts from 0 it goes down and finally, it is basically a square function reaching 0 again at certain value of g which is at g 1. And uh, so, as you know that more 0 means more less number of information going into the uh, going going to the from the sample to the image. So, that is why the ideal transfer function will have only 1 0 here and all this information which are here are basically at a low spatial frequency are transferred to the image uh, from the sample. So, which is this kind of situation is they have never really achieved because all these microscopes will have defects and the defects change this transfer function drastically. And I am showing you one such picture where the actual transfer function is shown uh, as T g as a function of g here and T g values can actually uh, can be varying from plus 2 to minus 2. But what you can see is that there are lot of variation not only the number of zeros have increased in these transfer function, but also the spatial frequencies uh, depending on spatial frequencies the values are changing. So, there are higher order values there are lower order values of the transfer functions. Now, one can actually see the effect of transfer function effect of the space spherical aberration constant on this transfer function. This is what is shown here which I have shown in the last class itself. If I change the spherical aberration uh, constant C s from 1 to 3 millimeter the transfer function changes drastically. For one basically the transfer function has a very large uh, width uh, before the first 0 comes here and uh, again as the C s increases this 0 is slowly moving to the left side the lower value of g and therefore, less number of space lesser the spatial frequency can be transferred in the actual microscope and this is done at a fixed value of d focus minus 60 nanometers. So, once we optimize the C s value ok here it is seen that optimization C s value is basically 1 and then we can look at what happens basically as a function of the d focus as a function of delta f. So, a delta f is varied here for 200 kilo volt microscope with C s 1 millimeter uh, from point minus 30 nanometers to minus 70 nanometers. As we vary from minus 30 to minus 70 the profile or the transfer function profile as a function of g is changing drastically. For a very low value of delta f that is minus 30 the g 1 comes at a frequency like this and there are several zeros here after this g 1. And as you go from minus 30 to minus 50 the g 1 value shifts to the right side that be more informations for lower spectral frequency ranges can be transferred to the image plane. But as you increase the value uh, delta f to say minus 70 nanometers you can see that g 1 actually never reaches the 0 value or 0 axis value and g 2 rather uh, sorry g 1 actually is coming at a higher value, but g 2 is uh, another kind of spikes come into picture which is. Uh, giving or restricting the transfer function to a much lower value of g which can be transferred to the actual image. So, these are the two effects of C s and delta f. Then for a given microscope where C s values are known how do I optimize the delta f values. And this is basically done by a scientist called Otto Caesar in 1949 and that is what we will do. So, as you can understand that the presence of zeros in the, the what is called in these transfer functions are basically tells you the gaps in the output signal correct because these zeros means they had giving no output signal as far as the transfer of the, uh, the actual things in the sample to the image plane is concerned. So, uh, that means these frequencies can be thought of filtered out. So, obviously base transfer function will be 1 in which there are least number of zeros the one I have shown you one slide back here is basically the ideal transfer function where there are only one zero there is only one zero. So, therefore, best one will be the one you will where there will be least number of zeros in the transfer function. So, that the uh, the best resolution is possible. So, in what Sager has done Sager auto Sager along back in 1949. He has basically described. We has basically described the optimization of the the focus or defocus in a particular microscope. What is said that the transfer function can be optimized by balancing the effect of spherical aberration against a particular value of defocus. So that means if I 
I need to get a particular value of defocus where the effect of C s can be balanced. This delta f is known as Sager defocus which is given by this formula minus 1.2 C s lambda to the power half and many times we write this equation as minus 1.2 SCZ where SCZ is known as given the Sager focus the focus C s lambda to the power half. So, what you can see clearly from this picture is that the Sager focus is basically uh, tells us that all the beams will have at the defocus all the beams will have nearly constant phase out to this first 0 a first crossover in the uh, 0 g axis that is what is shown here this is the first crossover at the 0 defocus a 0 g axis. Uh, so, therefore, all these beams or the electron beams will be nearly constant phase out to this and this is what basically required to obtain the best possible uh, resolution or information in electron microscopes. This performance the best performance obviously uh, will be expected from a microscope at values first value or first crossover value on the 0 g 0 uh, of the g axis unless and until obviously we do lot of image processing later on that is we improve the contrast by doing some other means. But this is what is obtained from a particular uh, for a particular machine with a given value of C s. Now, uh, how does this formula arrive that can be basically uh, done by using uh, simply uh, several aspects. So, what you can see from this uh, from this picture is that from this uh, what is called uh, from the slide is that the closest we can get to the ideal curve ideal curve which I have shown you is basically corresponding to sigma corresponding to this value the xi z to the equal to minus 120 degrees and that corresponds to sin xi z to be equal to minus 1. So, that means this is the obviously maximum value or whatever minimum value of sin possible because sin is a bounded function between uh, 0 and 1 or uh, minus 1 and 1 basically depends on the angle. So, minus 1 is the minimum value of the six sign is possible and this is the gives you the best optimal possible uh, the value of transfer function. Now, let us see how this can be basically uh, derived using this uh, formula which I have already given you for psi and uh, for psi we have seen that the psi is given depends on the defocus and, of and the also the spherical aversion constant. So, this is equal to pi delta f g to the power square see, lambda g to the power square plus half of pi c s lambda q g to the power 4. So, if I basically minimize this function at a particular value of g I can get basically the stage of focus. So, let us do that if I minimize this I get very simple equation twice pi delta f lambda g plus again twice pi c s lambda q g to the power q and this obviously has to be 0. So, we can write down this as this plus c s lambda square g square. So, that can be easily seen. So, when psi will be minus 120. So, we can obtain from this equation that this is minus 2 i pi by 3 equal to pi delta f lambda g square plus half of pi c s lambda q g to the power 4 and combining these two equations one can obviously obtain the simple mass simplified expression of Sager focus or the focus that is f c h s c h is equal to minus 
4 by 3 C s lambda to the power minus C s 4 by 3 C s lambda to the power 1 by half. So, that becomes 1.155 C s lambda to the power half. So, that can be easily derived by this way just by uh, putting the derivative first derivative of psi with respect to z to be 0 for a particular value of psi that is 120 degrees because at 120 degrees sin psi is equal to minus 1. So, by using these equations we can derive that Sager optimum Sager focus become 1.155 C s lambda to the power half which is very close to 1.2 and uh, this by fine tuning this calculation obviously one can arrive at the same Sager focus and which is basically nothing but that balancing act which you do of C s by putting the focus value at a particular uh, number. And this, this is routinely done in the microscope nowadays where the optimum image is obtained at a particular value of set of focus. Now obviously one can go ahead and even go to the uh, next step that is the first crossover is by this the next crossover can also be calculated and next crossover as it basically comes at a particular g value the next crossover can come at a particular g value given by this this is 1.51 cs minus 1 by 4 lambda minus 3 by 4 okay and this crossover is very important in the sense that at this defocus at the basically set the defocus uh, which corresponding to this value of g will give us the resolution limit of the microscopes and this resolution limits can be obtained by taking inverse of this which is equal to 0.66 cs lambda q to the power 1 by 4. So, this gives us the optimum resolution limit or the actual resolution limit for any uh, thermos electron microscopes. So, by knowing this number C s of the objective lens and lambda we can basically get that. That is why you understand now why people use million volt electron microscopes because lambda can be extremely exceedingly reduced by using higher and higher accelerating voltage from 100 to 200, 300 people have gone up to 1.5, uh, 1500 actually kilovolts. So, by and obviously another way of improving resolution is by correcting the C s which you are going to see today even the end of the lecture how we can do that. So, this actually puts us the limits of resolution this but this is not the limits of the information. Information limit is much much actually higher value than the resolution limits in microscopes ok information sorry much much lower value than the resolution of the microscope information can be achieved even much lower. In fact, there are reports that 1970s a detail of 0.66 Armstrong was actually done or achieved and uh, when the interpreted resolution was about 3.3 Armstrong. So, you can see that that actually it details an image does not mean that you can gain any useful information about the uh, microstructure. So, there is a distinct difference between the resolution limit and the information limits as far as the microscope is concerned. Well, so therefore, these two function one is as Sager and other one is the delta f Sager which is equal to 1.2 C s lambda to the power half these two are the master equations in the high resolution electron microscopy. They actually gives us give us the limits for any uh, uses in the high resolution electron microscope and this was due to Otto Sedger and other one the first equation is basically developed by Glazer. So, therefore, and these two people or these two scientists are called the pioneers of, of the high resolution electron microscopy for developing this concept in the high resolution electron microscopes. So, that is actually sets the tone of the high resolution electron microscopes. So, if many students or many users have misconception that high resolution electron microscopy means just getting a lattice fringe 
are just getting some information on the on the computer screen or on the imaging screen where you can see the atomic planes okay but that's not the case there are a lot of many interesting aspects one is to know now as we have discussed here or we have shown you uh, that the transfer functions we normally do not take any of the things which are beyond this first zero something which is basically coming beyond this number or beyond the g1 value okay which is basically of no use to us but why it is so or whether this is really true or not that's what is gives us the new concept called envelope damping functions so plots on this tg or say psi g whatever psi g is also related to tg psi g versus g as you can see here can they be extended from this fast zero to the other values that is the question we need to ask ourselves because as you understand if we can extend this value to the higher g numbers and g is basically spectral frequency therefore we may be able to achieve much better information in the real space because g is in the reciprocal space so if g higher value of g means lower value of x or y or z the real space variables so if we can extend this g to the higher values and include them into transfer functions in a electron microscope we will be able to achieve much higher resolution and much higher information limits also can be achieved so if that is the case is it possible answer is no we are we are, we, are, we do not use this higher you know crossover or we do not extend the values of the g beyond this first crossover normally why this is mainly because of the damping effects or uh, the because of the other issues like this spatial coherency of the electron beams and also chromatic aberrations so which normally comes into play when spherical aberration is corrected and these these are basically due to spatial uh, coherency means as the electrons falls on a sample or basically if you look at the electron beam how small it wherever it is even it's 1 nanometer or 0.5 nanometer whether the spatial coherency of the electron beam exists or not is very difficult to ensure even using the the fake uh, guns so because of this resolution is hampered or because of this this higher uh, the g values can never be accessed second one is the chromatic aberrations although we can use fegs or the uh, field emission guns to reduce the beam energy spread to even very low values still it is very difficult to get zero chromatic aberrations or it is actually not yet possible to correct the chromatic aberration to that level so because of presence of both this chromatic aberration and the specific special coherency problems this uh, this kind of these frequencies can never be actually used to uh, get information from the sample now obviously the exactly mathematically this can be derived and mathematical envelope or uh, form of this envelope functions is very complex and one can actually simply write the t effective function as a function of g equal to t g e c e a e c is basically due to chromatic aberration and e a is due to spatial coherence of electron beam and once you put this uh, envelope function into the transfer functions they are coming as a multipliers as you can clearly see and this basically gives us limitation of using this higher values of g into the transfer function this effectively means the envelope function is basically acting as a virtual aperture in the back focal plane of the objective lens regardless is whatever the value of the defocus that is what is the actual meaning of that so that means physically if we at all put an aperture in the in the what's called in the back focal plane to remove this unwanted noise this must be less than size or uh, let the virtual aperture present because of this envelope envelope functions so that's why you know presence of this virtual aperture means higher order pass bands higher order pass band means this pass bands higher order values 
are never accessible it cannot be accessible because of presence of these envelopes that is why we, I say that this is nothing but envelope damping, damping functions or uh, this the these envelopes are actually these uh, functions uh, uh, frequencies are getting damped out because of presence of the envelopes due to chromatic aberration and the spherical coherency. And this is what can be shown, it is shown there. So, as you see here, this is the sin psi as a function of g. So, there are many, many, many such higher order frequencies or higher order g values which gets damped out because of the presence of these envelopes due to E c and E a. So, effect of E c and E a is to damp out this higher order frequency. So, we cannot access them. So, whatever may be the situation as you can clearly see that there are all the zeros more than higher than the g 1, <coughs> but this beyond that the values of the T g is very small and whether this can actually affect the resolution or the information of the microscope is needs to be analyzed. And it has been seen that it can be, it can affect. So, therefore, although resolution limits will be given by the first crossover, the information limits can be higher. Information limit can be given by this point or G 2 which is at a higher frequency, higher spatial frequency. So, that is why in many microscopic images, high resolution microscopic images nowadays whatever you see all the resolution is about say 0.8 Armstrong for the Titan microscope or 0.5 Armstrong for the chromatic aberrated microscopes, but information can be actually picometer levels. So, we can achieve information much higher much higher resolution levels or much higher value better values than the resolution level given in the microscopes. That is what is possible in the microscope because of this uh, the, the presence of the small you know higher order g values at in the in the transfer functions. So, these all give us some extra informations. Now, by knowing all these aspects how actually in a real microscopist change or operate the microscopes because as you see defocus has a very strong role to play in getting the actual high resolution images because delta f which you have seen is a very important aspect and we have to go to the Sager defocus limit to obtain the best resolution image. So, how do I achieve the delta f Sager in a real microscope that can be done in many ways obviously first thing one can do is that I know if for example, what transfer case of transfer constant transfer function is that when the transfer is minimized that is you just for def, uh, start uh, for defocusing the objective lens in such way that you do not get see any contrast on the screen or on the computer screen or on the basically fluorescent skin. So, if you do not see that that becomes your best from that you start actually changing the focus value and reach the Schrager defocus value. So, this minimum value here as you can see is corresponding to this number of sin psi and this number of sin psi is happens to be 0.3. So, therefore, minimum contrast diff minimum contrast for the the orbital and focus length is given by minus 0.44 C s lambda to the power half. This can be calculated obviously in an actual microscope knowing the lambda and the C s, but in real microscopic sense you do not need to do you can simply uh, uh, change the objective focus in such way that you do not see on the screen anything that is becomes your uh, the minimum contrast in the microscope. And from there you start changing the focal length and as you change the focal length uh, the of the objective microscope you will be you should be able to reach the stage of focus. Otherwise what can people do is that in some special cases transfer function k actually settings special setting of transfer function are also used. One such is basically uh, aspect is to use something known as pass band or use larger window in the transfer function ok. So, that we can allow this higher spatial frequencies to contribute to the image. How it is done? Obviously, you as you see from this figure I clearly from the next figure which I am showing here from this figure very clearly you can see is that that this requires that psi to be constant obviously, psi means this value of psi, psi is depending on the g and also obviously depends on the C s and delta f. 
this requires psi to be constant and also d psi to be constant and d psi d g to be very small. One such example is shown here for silicon as you can see the sign psi is varying from minus 1, minus 1 to plus 1 as a function of g here g is the spatial frequency and what you can see is there many pass bands and if I select a pass band which corresponds to the 1 1 1 reflection of silicon uh, what you can see is that I can clearly get to see that psi remains almost constant for this from this part to this part of g and d psi by dg is also very small that means it is all not 0, but it is very small value. So, th because this side there is also very small and psi is remaining constant so that we can use this higher order passing bands and normally this kind of higher order passing bands occur periodically and one can actually obtain such equation like this delta f p n to be equal to 8 n plus 3 divided by 2 C s lambda whole half. So, when equal n equal to 0 that becomes the first this value here. Okay. So, and that becomes nothing but 3 by 2 C s to the power half 3 by 2 is 1.5 uh, and if you take root of that that becomes 1.15. So, that is because that becomes actually uh, the, the same as such a focus for n equal to 0. So, this uh, technique gives you the access to the higher spatial frequencies the here you can see here higher spatial frequencies thus the finer details in the real space as I said higher value of g means finer details in the real space. And this price is basically uh, is that only price we pay is that now there are many zeros 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 extra zeros are than the first zero. So, because of this more number of zeros and zeros corresponding to no output signal and therefore, there will be uh, transfer the G more zeros means lower spatial frequencies uh, will give you uh, at more zeros a less information transport a transfer function will be heavily affected that is the only problem. But this is used widely to basically select uh, the, uh, the focus in the uh, high electron images in many microscopes. So, therefore, in a nutshell I could say that in the in the lecture uh, for the last lecture and this lecture I have given you very what is called brief picture of the transfer function how the transfer function actually varies as a function of delta f c s and obviously the facial frequency g and how we can use it in different ways to obtain the optimum focus values at a or to by balancing the c s and this all are done routinely nowadays by computer. Okay, so, we do not need to do yourselves many times what people uh, many of the users do is that that instead of uh, trying to obtain the optimum uh, of focus we take through focus images that is we take images at different level of focus and then we see which is the optimum focus or which is the basically corresponding to seizure focus and that can be easily done routinely nowadays using this uh, the digital cameras where we do not need to spend money to grab or grab image just like earlier days we used to spend the uh, the and what is called camera plates where each camera produced to cost about hundreds rupees. So, in a normal imaging technique where you use the digital micro digital imaging process you do not rather actually uh, need to spend money for more images or less images you take. So, that is why nowadays one can easily take three focus images where at least 20 images as a function of focus can be taken and then from there one can actually decide which is the optimum focus image. So, that is actually a trial and error method which normally people use, but uh, for the beginners actually this is the best method possible. In fact, when I started using HRTM I also did the same way taken through focus images from the almost first thin films and then find out which is the optimum focus. Well, that is uh, basically uh, the state of art till 1999 uh, or 2000 from there lot of changes happened in electron microscope high electron microscopy especially people have started correcting the C s as we have seen C s plays a major role in, de in deciding the, uh, the resolution as well also the focus. So, if we can able to correct the C s then obviously, we can 
get better resolution, better uh, the information in the high resolution actual images. And that is what has been done by a scientist called E. Rose in H. Rose in 1990. He proposed that it is possible to correct the C s value in an electron microscope okay, by using a set of spherical lenses and hexapoles. And this was a major discovery, major, major discovery in the field of electron microscopy. As you know in a normal camera, we can basically correct the spherical aberrations by using a set of lenses okay, by basically diverging converging lens type we can basically uh, do this uh, change over. So, in a nutshell this is what I would like to tell you about high resolution microscopy and I have basically started from a normal camera and how the transfer function can change in electron microscopes, what are the factors controlling the transfer function and how to actually optimize them. Now, as I have says to shown you several lectures, uh, several slides actually in the last lecture and in the today's lecture also uh, that C s the spherical aberration constant plays a very important role in deciding the resolution of the transmission electron microscope. Rather to break the resolution limit of the transmission electron microscope requires the C s to be corrected. And this started uh, in 1990 by the classic paper published by H. Rose from an optic. As you know that in a normal camera, we can correct the spherical aberration by putting a set of converging diverging lens. Now, in electron microscope, this can be done by using set of spherical and hexapoles. That is what is shown in the slide. So, as you can see, this is the standard optic objective lens, this one, the standard objective lens. And the electron beams from there is passes through a set of spherical lens and hexapole lens and by this when it passes through all this actually hexapole lens do not affect the paraxial path of the rex, okay. but it corrects the aberration. In fact, it has been reported that the it is possible to actually have spherical aberration constant negative and by getting that one can actually break the resolution barrier of one Armstrong. And this is what has been done uh, later on by many scientists okay, uh, and uh, by Professor Nut Urban and others in, in the Hans Ruska Center of Electron Microscopy in, in Germany. They have been they are successful in making such a character possible and by putting characters below the orbital lens and out the orbital lens where both of the, uh, the what is called probe and the image characters can be inserted and such um, insertion of the characters leads to tremendous change of resolution. So, as you can see if the C s is corrected the resolution of the microscope will be dependent on only on the, uh, the, the chromatic aberration. So, therefore, resolution is basically can be written as when C s is corrected is like this delta E by E. And lambda c c this is the chromatic aberration to the power half. So, when c s is corrected and delta a e is basically 0 0.3 e v in a 200 kilo volt microscope and you can we can clearly see d c s will be approximately 0 0.8 Armstrong. In fact, if c c is corrected or the chromatic aberration is corrected which is going on now in, in the team project in U S it is possible to reach when C c is corrected also D C s and C c is possible to reach 0.28 Armstrong. So, you can imagine that by using all kind of characters we can actually reach a limit of 0.3 approximately 0.3 Armstrong which is very very close to the smallest atomic uh, size. The, the atomic diameter of carbon atom is 0.8 and 9 Armstrong. So, atomic diameter of hydrogen atom is 0.5 Armstrong. So, we will be able to reach a resolution limit of less than uh, the size of an hydrogen atom that is a dream which is uh, once needs to cherish, but obviously such a dream will come at a very high cost Maybe once uh, the I know that a CS character microscope cost about uh, several million dollars actually about 10 to 12 million dollars. So, once C s and C c characters both are, 
are actually uh, inserted in a time selector microscope length of the microscope will be three story building and, uh, and such a microscope operating such a microscope requires help of computers without computers one cannot actually operate such a microscope. Well this is all are getting done and in fact CS character microscopes are now available in India ID country is also going to get a CS character microscope very soon ID Madras and many other places like TIFR Mumbai and uh, uh, the GNCSR Bangalore has also got a CS character microscopes and soon there will be many uh, users using the CS character microscopes and maybe in future in India we will have CC character microscopes where we will be able to break resolution barrier to 0.3 Armstrong. Then we can see whatever you want to see whether atoms of any sizes can be easily imaged. And uh, as I have shown you uh, that in the uh, lot of lectures in the first class that if you have aberration CS character here the image shows the change as you can see if we correct CS we can clearly see the dumbbells silicon dumbbells. So that means we can clearly achieve the resolution of 0.8 Armstrong which is sub Armstrong resolution and from 0.8 to 0.3 will take us to a different domain of world or picture. So by using simply CS character microscope as I shown you in the first in the first lecture on HRTM even we can image the oxygen atoms in the strontium titanate. It has been reported by GI et al in science 2003 and now it is a routine things people can actually image oxygen, nitrogen, carbon atoms even which are very small using because resolution limits are rich that is value 0.8 is very easy to achieve. Now I do not want to go into uh, all kinds of numbers but let me show you how even 1970s people used to do electro microscope and get high signal microscope. This was is taken from uh, the Van Dyck et al uh, of the group of Amelings and the Van Tendalu in Belgium long back it is done in 1992 even before the characters have come into picture. This is the 8 TM dark field image of AU4 MN. What you can see here all the black and white dots of atoms which you do not know which one is what but you can see the antiphase domain boundaries marked by these white circles also you can see lot of distortions huge number of distortion in the picture. Next one is taken from a set of uh, pictures by many authors one of some of us is our. So we can actually image gain bound of germanium you can clearly see it consisting of the, uh, the dislocations at different intervals each each one has one is dislocations low angle gain boundary consisting of parallel set of dislocations. You can see that gain boundary of SN3, SI3 and 4 silicon nitride has amorphous layer on the uh, at a very small thickness about say 0.5 Armstrong, uh, 0.5 nanometer sorry and then phase boundaries between NiO, Ni, uh, Al204, nickel aluminite which is spinel is very flat and very sharp. Last one D is basically profile image all along 001 surface of hematite where you can see the black and white dots of iron. This was used to be the case in 1990s till 1990s but advent of CS character microscope has made lot of changes and it was possible now to pinpoint which atom is what and to the resolution of the level less than Armstrong. So therefore uh, basically this all nice and fine you can easily routinely get this in CS character microscopes but the real problem comes how to interpret the images or how to really you know they get the information from the images that is where the real challenge as I said the real handicap highly central microscopy is to interpret the images or uh, interpretation of the images requires simulations. Simulation needs lot of you know apparently knowledge as per the crystal structure of the material is concerned, atom positions are concerned also interaction of the electrons with the sample how this interaction and interaction is dynamic as we have seen. So in the next class I uh, will just describe the some of the simulation techniques and then I will move on to much uh, advanced uh, techniques like STEM or scan, scanning transmission electron microscopy where we can obtain even a normal routinely uh, microscopes conventional technical my electron microscope like the one which I have shown in you in the uh, beginning of this course it is possible to attain achieve uh, different other kinds of information like jet contrast uh, the atomic number contrast information 
or even uh, you can actually take high-resolution images using this uh, the stem uh, features to obtain or to see the heavy atoms presence in a particular material which you, these are all discussions we will do in the next class.